Well, once again, we're having some internet problems, some connection problems. And uh, so we're going to start over again, fresh and anew here. So welcome to our July 4th message. And uh, we're going to be talking about freedom from to freedom for. All right. Now, Independence Day on July the 4th, 1776, the Second Continental Congress unanimously adopted they unanimously adopted the Declaration of Independence announcing the colonies separation from Great Britain and it's been made a federal holiday. So once again, uh, our internet connection went out and we're back on. So thanks for getting back on with us. Don't forget to visit our website at, at lyitl.org. That's abbreviated for love you in the lord.org and there is a meditation prayer that we put on there for you and i would encourage you to go there and let that begin to help train the how to how to praise god in the morning and get things going for god so that you can be right with god in, in a way of of living your life for god now we're made right with god through the blood of jesus christ but living our life is a different story. It, that's the decisions that we make. So I want you to go back to our website today. Listen to that. It's about, about seven minutes long. It's got music in the background. I suggest you just close your eyes and lift your hands, listen to the words, and just see if those words might take and be something that you might want to take and present to God for your life as you start each and every day. So let's get started. Even though we lost our internet, we're back on now. But actually, Independence Day, the, the uh, Declaration of Independence was signed on July the 2nd. But it was deemed on July the 4th as a national holiday. And the Declaration of Independence is a document signed. And so the Declaration of Independence declared that the 13 American colonies were free from British rule. And today we take the freedom given to us so lightly. Today, many abuse their freedom. And because they do that, they are destroying America in so many ways. Well, likewise, let's bring this to a Christian perspective. In Galatians chapter 5, turn there. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Paul gives us these incredible words for us today. And he says, for brethren. Ye have been called unto liberty. And he says, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Did you get that? He said, if you'll walk in the Spirit, you will not feel the lust of the flesh. So whenever you think about summer vacation and when you got out of school, you thought, man, no more school. And you can remember that song is, you know, no more pencils, no more books, no more teachers, dirty looks. And so no more schoolwork, no more homework, no more projects, uh, just two and a half months of freedom, sweet, utter freedom. What could be better, right? But before long, you became bored. And it's just in a day or two, you say, Mom, I'm bored. I don't know what to do. Mom say, go out and spend some time with your friends. Find something to do, right? And, and as parents, you know what I'm talking about. For a few days early in the summer, your kids were thrilled. But before too long, their classic complaint was what? Mom, I'm bored. So there's something to do. So we, we need something to do. So you say, well, why don't you call your friends up and figure it out for yourselves? And your child answers, oh, I don't know. I'm just bored. So being free from the school was not enough because they wanted to do something for. So let's take that principle, freedom from the demands of school. It sounded great at first, but it was not enough. And in a much serious vein, uh, we say a similar drama playing out on the world stage today. 
Uh, if you'll remember, I was talking about this before we lost our internet connection, that the people of Iraq were set free from the brutal oppression of Saddam Hussein. They began to experience unprecedented freedom from that harsh uh, despotism. They were free from Saddam's tyranny. Why? But yet, did they did? But did they live as free people, or did they simply fall prey to the next version of bondage? Well, we find that freedom from Saddam's cruelest dictatorship. It sounded great at first, but was being set free enough? So likewise today, many of us have been set free in Jesus. And the question is, will we choose to live free? There's two sides of freedom, all right? In our day, we, uh, we mostly think of freedom as freedom from something that constrains or subjugates us. But on the last day of school, we, we celebrated freedom from the daily demands of education. On the 4th of July, we celebrate America's freedom from British domination. Surely freedom includes freedom from, but this isn't the whole picture. There is another side to freedom, a side we sometimes neglect, and uh, it's a freedom for something. And uh, it's the freedom to be able to do things that we haven't been able to do in the past. The freedom of summer vacation, rightly appreciated, isn't just the freedom from school, but it's the freedom to be able to do things, a lot of things, that you weren't able to do when you were in school. The freedom for going to camp, the freedom for getting enough sleep, the freedom for going on a vacation, uh, the freedom of doing some fun things, and so forth and so on. And so the best scenario, freedom from politics and oppression, is the freedom for expressing your opinions without fearing that you're going to be tortured or killed. So it's the freedom to vote uh, for the candidate of your choice, the freedom of making your country a better place for all citizens. And if you have freedom from without freedom for, then you don't have real freedom. Let's talk about the freedom in Christ. The same is true when it comes to our freedom in Christ. In the middle of the first century AD, the Christians in Galatia, that's really known as the modern day Turkey today, were struggling with the whole notion of freedom, which is why Paul wrote the letter of Galatians chapter 5 to them. On one hand, many Galatians who had begun their Christian life in, in the freedom of Jesus Christ were now turning to legalism trying to earn God's grace by religious actions. Now we know in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we know that, that, that salvation is a gift from God. You can't earn that. That's something that God gives. But now the Galatians had taken that free gift of Christ and now they're getting the people to go back into legalism, trying to get them to go back and practice the law, which they've been set free from. And, and, uh, uh, and they don't realize is that, that they, they've gotten away from, from the God's grace and yet going back to religious actions. So on the other hand, some of the Galatians were abusing their freedom, doing things that now dishonored God. And so Paul wrote to call the Galatians to live in freedom, both freedom from, from the law, and freedom in to be able to choose to live for Jesus Christ to bring glory and honor to the Father. In his letter, he, he clarified both for the first century Galatians and for you and I today that the meaning and purpose of Christian freedom. So what is the meaning and purpose of Christian freedom? As believers in Jesus Christ, we are free from the tyranny of sin and death. We no longer need to fear that our sin will lead us to eternal separation from God, which is the ultimate death described in Revelation chapter, uh, 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 in the book of Revelation. So uh, we no longer need to be dominated by the power uh, that sin has in our life. 
So through our faithful participation in the death and the resurrection of Christ, we have been set free from those things that once bound us, that kept us from God. Moreover, we are set free from trying to earn God's favor through keeping the law, as if this were possible in the first place. If you broke one law, then you were guilty of all. And so Paul writes in Galatians 5, 1, so Christ has really set us free and, and now make sure that you stay free is what he's saying. And don't get tied up again in this slavery to the law. So of course there's a danger in, 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 inherent in the sort of freedom that people have today. And uh, the danger is anti-nominism. It's the danger of saying to yourself, great, so I don't have to keep God's law to earn salvation. Now I can do whatever I want. I can sin if I want without worry. And it's whoopee. It's all about having the party of life. And that's not true. Although it sounds silly, but and I'm going to put it very blunt, bluntly, that is a genuine danger for the Christian today. And, and one that snags most Christians uh, from one time to another, and like for many, oftentimes. I was t uh, talking with a Jewish friend about the, the grace of God given in Christ and how his grace is given without cost by definition. So God's love is not something we earn, and nor is salvation something we earn. It is a gift. God's love to us is a gift. God's uh, uh, given us the ability to choose, to receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. It's a gift. Your salvation is a gift given freely in Christ. And my Jewish friend responded, but that's crazy. If salvation is given freely, then people won't have any motivation to be good. Uh, what will keep them from sinning all they want? And indeed, that was a great question. So the biblical answer is that Christian freedom isn't only freedom from sin, freedom from death and freedom from the law and the need to earn God's favor by our works, but Christian freedom is also freedom for. It's freedom for doing what's right and honoring to God. Let me say it again. It's freedom for what? For choosing to do what is right and honoring God. So formerly when you were called in sin, you couldn't uh, please God, no matter how hard you tried. But now in Christ, you are free to do what God desires, even what, uh, what his law dictated, right? But yet you do this not to earn God's favor, but in response that the favor already given in Christ allows you that ability to make those choices that I'm going to honor God I want you to go back to our website today at lyitl.org. There is something we've added. It's a little seven minute and, and it's a meditation prayer. There's music in the background and there, there's some pictures on there, but I encourage you just to close your eyes, listen to that, lift your hands to God, listen to the words and see if these might not become the words that you would like to say to God as you start each and every day of your life. And even though that's been put on the website, even though we've told you about it, many may not even go there to listen to it. Oh, I encourage you, take action and let that be how you start your new day every day. So here's the good news of our freedom in a nutshell. You are now free to do the right thing. You are free to live your life for God. You are now free to live the best possible life that there is. In Christ, you have freedom at, uh, from and you have freedom for. So let's talk about freedom for loving service, all right? Paul is quite specific in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 13, about what our Christian freedom is for. So let me read a portion of that to you. Galatians, chapter 5, verse 13. For you have been called to live in freedom, not freedom to satisfy your sinful nature, but freedom to serve one another in love. Did you get that? But freedom to serve one another in love. 
in verse 14, for the whole law uh, uh, to be summed up is in this one command, Paul says, love your neighbor as yourself, all right? So did you catch that? Don't use the freedom uh, for sinful nature, the flesh, you know, in the Greek is what he's talking about, but rather use it to serve one another in love. So the English misses the shocking irony that's in of the Greek, which literally reads, you were called to freedom. Did you get that? So use your freedom to become, uh, 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 so use your freedom by becoming uh, slaves to each other in love. Slavery is the antithesis of freedom since it involves being owned by another person. Yet Paul says that we should use our freedom in Christ to choose to act as if we were slaves out of love to each other. Slaves out of love in order to love Christ, all right? So we're not just talking about casual, convenient serving here, but committed and consistent and self-sacrificial servanthood, uh, exactly the sort of thing we see in Christ himself. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Once again, we have a Bible study here, so make sure you have your Bible in hand. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of, in other words, God the Holy Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, here it is again, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. What good words that need to be taken for America today. Let this mind be in you, which also was, was also in Christ Jesus. So we find here, verse 6, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man, of men. Verse eight, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That is the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow of things in heaven and things of earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so now you may say, well, wait a minute. I'm not comfortable with that slave metaphor. Couldn't that become abusive or, or, or unhealthy domination? Surely it could because Christians still sin, even after they have put their faith in Christ. But, that, but that's not Paul's intention here. Notice that he calls us to mutual servanthood, not a one way of slavery, not a one way of domination. He says, if I am committed to serving you sacrificially, that you are committed to serving me in the same way. So then there's no danger of abuse. There's no danger of domination if everybody is going to have that. that in other words, I'm going to be willing to be used uh, of God to bless you. And if God's going to use them to bless me, there's no, no way there's going to be abuse. So moreover, we are thought to be slaves one to another. He says, through love. So love not only enables us to serve you and you to serve me, but it controls the nature of servanthood. Thus, if love is in charge, as it were, then once again, the dangers of abuse and domination are minimized, all right? So we, uh, we see a marvelous illustration of how we are to live as free people in the lives of Nelson uh, Mandela. And so 
we find here for decades, uh, he labored in South Africa to bring an end to discrimination on the grounds of race. Ultimately, his revolutionary strategy got him into trouble with the government who put him in prison. And beginning when he was 45 years old, Nelson Mandela was confined in a, self, uh, a South African prison for 27 years. Finally, in 1990, at the age of 72, he was now released. And one might suppose that, that after almost three decades in prison, and at the age of 72, Nelson Mandela had earned a comfortable, restful retirement and could just sit back and pretty much do nothing, just enjoy life. But yet he saw freedom from prison as a freedom for service, a freedom from prison for an opportunity to have freedom for service. So he began to use his newfounded freedom to work for the cause of racial reconciliation and justice in South Africa. Four years after his release, he was elected as president of his country and the first African president of South Africa. Now, it's unlikely that you and I will ever make an impact on the world that Nelson Mandela did, but our life in Christ should mirror his in a way, all right? So you and I have been set free from the prison of sin, from the prison of death, from the prison of bondage to the law, not so we can live our own comfortable life and do what we want, but so we can serve one another in love. So it brings up the question, when you live your life today or yesterday or tomorrow, or is it gonna be a life that's lived for other people, to help other people, to encourage other people, to love other people? And I might add, when we look at the broader sweep of the New Testament theology, we realize that we have been set free not only to serve our brothers and sisters in Christ, but to live as servants of Christ in and for the world. Last month, we were reminded again and again of our call as, a, as the church of Almighty God. That's what you and I are. We are the church to be an outreach, whether we are reaching across the streets to students in, in, in schools across America, or across the world to children in China and Muslims uh, uh, in Africa. Yet Christ has set us free so that we might give our lives away in service, loving one another, reaching out to love our neighbors, no matter where they may live. So we've already seen a wonderful picture in the scriptures here of love serving this summer. Uh, and, and, and yet we're going to learn many more to come, right? I think of those who, who uh, uh, counseled at an Indian village uh, and, and Adventure Mountain, uh, giving a week of their lives to serve kids for the sake of Christ. And I think of folks who have stepped forward to teach summer school or are, are looking ahead. I think of those who are getting ready to serve as a junior high and high school counselor or, or maybe leading a vacation Bible school or, or being team members on several uh, missions trips. And, and the list goes on and on and on. But sisters and brothers, Christ has set us free to serve each other in love and together to love the world around us. The more to do uh, uh, this, the more our neighbors will see Christ in us and be drawn to him. So then we talked about the freedom and spirit as I try to get through this very quickly here. Before I conclude the sermon, I must mention one other critical aspect of Christian freedom. I've said that we have been set free from bondage by the law, but not, but we do not have to learn to earn God's favor by doing the right things and avoiding the wrong things. His favor, which we call grace, has already been given to us in and through Jesus the Christ. But I want to respond to a friend's concern that without the law, we have all have little motivation uh, to doing what's right. And that's not true. What, what, what's to keep us from living just for ourselves if we're free from the law? Well, well, uh, what is it there to ensure that we are that we will not use our freedom uh, uh, to to live our own way instead of living for God? What is there to ensure that we will use our freedom for honoring God and for serving one another in love? Well, 
We find the answer in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Hi, Victoria. Good to see you. Uh, which reads quite clearly and literally. But I say, keep on walking in the Spirit. See that capital letter S? Keep on walking in God the Spirit, and you really won't fulfill the desires of the flesh. Did you get that? If you'll start walking, if you'll keep walking in the Spirit. Now, I told you on our website that we've added the, the, uh, a prayer and it's how you start your morning. I, I encourage, I'm going to go back to that again. Go to our website at, at loveyouinthelord, L-Y-I-T-L.org. There is a, a, a meditation prayer on there. And I encourage you, when you get up in the morning, turn that on, close your eyes, lift your hands, think of the, let the music help you there. But just, I want you to think about the words and how they're said, and may they become your words to say, Lord, today I'm going to live for you. But go back and listen to that. So notice that we have one imperative and one result imperative. Keep on walking in the Spirit, Galatians 5, 16. Keep on walking in the Spirit. Keep on walking in the Spirit. Well, I don't feel like going to church. Keep on going to church. I don't feel like reading my Bible. Keep on reading your Bible. I don't feel like praying. Keep on praying. So what he's saying is, but I say keep on walking in the Spirit. Let the Spirit of God lead you, and you really won't fulfill the desires of the flesh. That's the result. The imperative is keep on walking. Keep on. Keep on. The result is you won't fulfill the lust <clears throat> of the flesh. <clears throat> Do you see the difference where we're taught we, we were to walk in the spirit in order to, to, to corral the flesh? But Paul's original intention is more focused. Let me get into this. We're to walk in the spirit and to keep on walking in the spirit and freedom from the flesh will take care of itself. So in other words, you'll experience freedom from sin. Not when you beat your body to make it stop sinning, but when you allow the indwelling spirit of the Holy Spirit of God to fill your heart and to always guide your steps with a goal, with an intent, in order to honor God our Father the way we live our lives. So that keeps us from what's known as unbridled sin. Even when we're not bound by the law, it is, it is the very power of God alive within us and among us that will drive us, that will guide us to live a life of service, of serving God and serving one another in love. So God's spirit is there to help us to do what the law cannot do. And this includes serving one another. So I expect that many of us will find ourselves today struggling with the desires of the flesh. And I expect that many of us also are struggling with whether or not we choose to serve one another in love. So what can we do? First, number one, remember that Christ has set you free from sin, death, and the bondage of the law. Number two, rely on him. Number three, thank him. Number four, trust him. Number five, here it is, center your life in him. And in Christ alone will you find true freedom. Now, first of all, remember that Christ is what? Set you free from sin, death, by law. Secondly, don't rely on your own strength, but on God's strength from the indwelling of the Spirit. What you cannot accomplish on your own, God can and will accomplish in and through you by his spirit. So remember Paul's words to the Philippians in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 that we read. I am sure that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus uh, comes back again. So the third thing is, when you struggle, call out to God for help. Call out to God for help. And let the Spirit of God in, in, in this uh, community share the struggle. You, you weren't meant to be alone. So the Spirit's power is available to you, not only inside of you, but also in the community of Christ's people. 
That's why in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. But what? Exhorting one another. As so much more, you see that the approach, encouraging one another. In other words, pull together. And when you, you find yourself not wanting to walk in the Spirit, get around people that are wanting to walk in the Spirit and see if that's not contagious for you. So Christ has set us free from sin and death. Christ has set us free uh, for serving in love. Christ has given us his spirit to help us to experience the fullness of that freedom. And this is good news. So what do you do? You live it out. You shout it out. You praise God. Don't become lazy and concerned. Uh, you know, people say, well, you know, and I say it over and over and over. Our number one goal for still being here after salvation is to be a witness, to, sa to win people to Christ. So don't become lazy and unconcerned about the loss. Become an active Christian, making a difference. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13 through 16 of our text today. For brethren, you've been called uh, unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. This I say, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Listen, go back and visit our website. Listen to that meditation prayer on there. Let that be the first step of guiding you from every day of your life. So remember, we, we are saved freedom from, but the whole purpose is to give us freedom for. And if you've never truly trusted Christ as your Savior, I would pray that today that you wouldn't just think that, oh, I just go to church and I hear a song and I pray some little simple prayer. Ta-da! I'm saved. I'm, I can live my life the way I want. It doesn't work that way. The first thing is, Jesus says, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. So what is that repentance referred to? Jesus was always about the father. If you remember the prodigal son he, he, and everything, when he, when he got into sin, he came back and he said, Father, I've sinned against you. That's repentance. Repenting to a holy God, a holy creator. I am in sin and that God cannot participate in sin. So I have offended a holy and pure God. Father, I'm sorry for that sins, for all my sins. That's repentance. And then we look, because we realize that we're unfit to be in the presence of a holy God, we turn to Jesus, God in the flesh, and, and Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus, God, hanging on a cross, shedding his blood, but doing more than that. He took my sins and your sins that would have kept us from God for eternity on himself, and he paid that sin debt. So I repent to the Father. And now I know I need a Savior. So I look to Jesus and only to Jesus. And I ask him like the thief on the cross, would you remember me when, when thou comest into thy kingdom? Then Jesus gives his word, his promise. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Likewise today, when you repent to God the Father and you look to Jesus as your Savior and, and Jesus saves you, then your name is written today in the, in, in, the, uh, in the Lamb's book of life. And then God gives you the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit to empower you to be able to bring the changes that are necessary that the flesh would normally give into. But the Spirit of God wants you to guide your life that your life might reflect a life that would bring honor and glory to the Father. If you haven't prayed that prayer, you might pray it like something like this. Heavenly Father, I have sinned against you and I'm so sorry. And I know I can't be in your presence because you're holy and you're pure. But I now look to Jesus. Jesus, I ask you to, to, uh, uh, to hear my prayer and I ask you to come into my heart, be my savior, and then give me your word, your promise, that today I will be with you. So Father, I've sinned against you. Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to save me once and for all by what you did on the cross of Calvary and through your resurrection. 
And I know you're alive today, sitting on the right hand of God the Father. So please save me. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And then I, I, I'm so glad. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that you put in my life now. I look forward to being led by God that I might be able to glorify God and love serve other people. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, visit our website at lyitl.org. Uh, my wife and I, Lady, Lady Karen and I, we, we, this is our church for now. We're in Tyler, Texas. And if, if you find our ministry touching and you want to share it, hit that like ver uh, button. And, but hit share because when you hit share, it puts uh, this sermon into the front of others that others that I would never have got this sermon to get to see or hear it. And what if somebody got saved because all you did was liked and shared? And uh, then you pray over that. And if this ministry has been a blessing, uh, there's a way that if you want to help uh, support the ministry. It's on our website. But until then, keep us in your prayers. We love you. Thank you for joining us. And God bless each and every one of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.